Welcome back. Here's another example of partial fraction decomposition. We have this rational function, 2x plus 8, on top of x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x. We have to integrate this function. Focus your attention on the denominator's degree versus the numerator's degree. Check and make sure that the denominator's degree is more than a numerator's degree. If it is, then you can proceed with this method. If it's not, or if it's equal, then you're going to have to do uh, some long division. We'll do an example like that in another video. But this is the case, the cubic in the denominator, linear in the numerator. We're ready to begin the method, and it begins by us looking at this denominator and being able to properly factor it and diagnose exactly what types of factors that it has. We're going to deal with three different types of factors. A linear factor, a linear that's raised to a power, and then an irreducible quadratic. Those are the three options we'll have. There could be more, but those are the three options that we're going to deal with. And so how does this factor? It's a cubic, so generally that's going to be difficult to factor. But what we have here is that the uh, constant term is missing. So it's really a quadratic in disguise. Factor out x. You'll be left with x squared minus 4x plus 4. It's a quadratic. Would you then factor Mm, that quadratic factors as x minus 2 times x minus 2. So it's x minus 2 quantity squared. Two different types of factors. x is a linear factor. And x minus 2 quantity squared is a linear factor that's raised to a power. We handle these differently. When we go to decompose, what needs to happen is the linear factor will get its own fraction, so we'll have some constant over the linear factor. But then when it comes to a linear factor that's raised to a power, what we need is that power and all powers lower than it down to the first power. So not only do we need a, a fraction for x minus 2 squared with a constant up top, we also need that next one too, a fraction of x minus 2 to the first power. Uh, if it's a cubic, you're going to need the third, the second, and the first power, and so on. But all of the numerators are just constants. And so our job is to take our fraction and decompose it into these fractions, which we can then separately integrate. But there's some algebra that we need to do. We need to figure out the constants. What is A? What is B? What is C that makes this happen? And the way we figure out the constants is by trying to put it back together. Find out what that common denominator is, which was the original guy, x times the quantity of x minus 2 squared and execute putting these three fractions back into one. Multiply by what you're missing from the common denominator. So the first fraction, a over x, is missing the quantity of x minus 2 squared. The second fraction already has the quantity of x minus 2 squared, so it's missing the x. Now it's this third fraction that you've got to be careful with. It's missing not just the x factor in the denominator, another factor of x minus 2 is also missing. So you need to multiply by an x and an x minus 2 on that third fraction. And all in all, you put it together and you, and you get the original fraction. And it's at this point then that you focus your attention on the numerators now that you got the denominators equal. And this leads to an equation. The equation is going to be those numerators all added up to be the original numerator. And what we do is we want to say that this is true for all values of x. And we want to pick particular values of x that make the calculation simpler. And so a good value of x, or a smart value, a smart choice of x, would be x equal to. Because every term that has x minus 2 would go to 0. Another smart choice would be x equals 0. Because every term that has an x in it will go to 0. And so instead of solving three equations and three unknowns, what we can do is pick this smartly and be able to solve for one equation and one unknown. It's going to be um, able to work out well for the first two choices. So when x is 0 and x is 2, we'll be able to quickly know exactly what one of the variables are. Let's go first with x equals 0. If you've had x equals 0, then the bx term zeroes out. The cx term, even though it's times an x minus 2, zeroes out. You'll be able to get exactly what a is. Um, a will be multiplied by a 4, a negative 2 squared, and that's going to be equal to an 8. When you, don't forget, you've got to plug it to both sides. This is an equation. Don't just plug it to the left. Also plug it to the right. 
And so what we get is that a must be 2. And then we take the next choice. Let x equal 2. Any term that has x minus 2 in it will end up going to 0. And you can then get exactly what b is because a and c terms have an x minus 2 on them. And so you plug 2 into both sides. Those guys are 0 out. And you get that 2b is 12. So that makes b equal to 6. All right, you're doing great. Now what you've done is you've run out of smart choices that will eliminate two of the variables and leave you just with one variable. You've chosen the guys that make the denominator zero or just chosen things that would make terms vanish. And now we have to then pick something else that we haven't chosen already. And so just pick something that's easy to plug in, something convenient that you haven't already plugged in. So you chose zero already, you chose two. What would be an another good choice at this point then? It won't, it won't kill all the variables at once. What will happen, though, is you already know what a is and what b is. And so you'll pick a value like x equal 1, something easy to plug in, and all the variables will still be there. Nothing will go to 0. But that's okay, though, because you know two of them, you'll be able to get the third one. And so plug a 1 in, and what you end up with is uh, a plus b minus c is equal to 10. But you know that a is 2, you know that b is 6, so together they are 8, and you'll get that c must be then a negative 2, if you do the algebra right. Okay, so all the algebra is necessary to help us figure out how it decomposes. And now here comes the calculus. Now that we have decomposed it, can we integrate these individual fractions? So what we have is... 2 over x, uh, 6 over x minus 2, quantity squared, and negative 2 over x minus 2. So 2 over x, that's just going to be 2 times the natural log of x. 6 over x minus 2 squared, that's going to end up being negative 6 over x minus 2. And then negative 2 over x minus 2, that's negative 2 times the natural log of x minus 2. Make sure you use absolute value bars when you have these natural log as the antiderivative. And actually, that's it. So um, if you ever have the integral of 1 over x plus a quantity squared, I just want you to know, I mean, you can do the u substitution and work it all out. I just want you to be able to, it comes up so often, I want you just to be able to know that it is exactly negative 1 over x plus a. And that's how I was able to get that second integral so quickly. So it help, it's helpful to have these integrals ready because often with partial fractions, when you have these linear power, linear factors that's raised to a power, you're going to end up with these fractions like this. And, and so that's a good thing to just have on hand. You don't have to worry about doing the use of in the, in the middle of the problem. This is an indefinite integral. So we plus C and we're done. We have found the antiderivative. Um, we could possibly put the, the, the natural logs into one term if we wanted to. But, but this is it, though. This guy is the antiderivative of the original. If you actually took the derivative of what's in the box here and, and, and made it through all the hard work, you would actually get the original integrand. Okay. All right, we'll come back and work on a different situation where we might have um, an irreducible quadratic. That's our last option. Okay, thank you.